Hey, Mr. Squirrel. Was that you making all that noise last night? Do you know where Ruggles is? Hey, where are you going? Ruggles, are you down here? Okay, let's see what we find on the old snake cam. scared the crap out of me. What are you doing? I'm trying to get rid of your vermin. What's vermin? Um, vermin's like squirrels or raccoons or rats or any kind of animal that comes and gets in your house. And the thing is they carry diseases and they can make you sick. So Ew. we want to get them out of here before they do that. This is my snare pole. Now see this end here? Mm -hmm. This end goes around their neck. And what happens is I sneak up on them, and when I have this around their neck, Sick. I pull, huh? Huh? <laughs> what was that? You hear that? That's them. Oh, hey, listen, give me some space, okay? I'm gonna get this while I hear them right there, all right? So maybe go find your mom or dad, okay? Thanks. Okay. All right, you. Let's see. Okay, let's see what we got here. The most famous vampire of all time is Count Dracula, who first appeared in literary form in 1897. But is this creature of the night purely fictional? Or is there a remnant of fact to this notorious villain? Author Bram Stoker based his fictional Dracula on the real-life Romanian prince Vlad Tepes, also known as Vlad the Impaler. He earned his moniker by killing, enslaving, and yes, impaling thousands during his violent reign in the mid-1400s. His Romanian surname, Draculia, means son of the dragon. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Eddie, watch out. Just back up a little bit, honey. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, Eddie. You want to give it a try? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Are you going to take that? Huh? Now, hold on. Just be careful, babe. I want to get this on the camera here. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Come on, you can do it. Hit it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Look at that. See? It's fun. <laughs> when you're dealing with electricity, Eddie, you got to be really, really careful because if you... Dad! Dad! <laughs> It's not funny. Honey, what is going on? <laughs> not, nothing. We're just having a little bit of fun. Did the exterminator come back? Back? I didn't know he left. His truck's been here all day. Huh. Well, um, maybe you should find him. All right. Hmm? Okay, I'll go check up in the attic. Watch out for raccoons. <laughs> okay. Eddie, go check the basement. The basement? Yeah, the basement. There may be some natural medical explanations to explain at least some vampire cases, especially from earlier times when people's understanding of disease and illness was very limited. The paleness of, of uh, tuberculosis 
the coughing up of blood uh, were symptoms that could uh, easily be equated with traditional vampirism. And sometimes when the outbreak uh, reached hysterical proportions, there would be a, a popular movement to dig up a corpse. They might find due to just simple decomposition blood in the mouth of a corpse because the gases had forced blood upward. And the, this would be interpreted as proof that the corpse was a vampire. We fear vampires because we fear the dark. We fear the unknown. We fear the superstitious side of our nature and the, the, the horror of living forever without our soul. Mister? Where are you? Oh! My camera! Uh, hello? Mister? Mister? Are, are you alright? The Redding family bravely managed to escape their encounter. The body of exterminator Stan Polanski was recovered, mysteriously drained of blood. Police conducted a thorough search of the house, and though the mysterious nests were located, no unknown creatures were found. Months later, similar attacks were reported in a mining village 60 miles north. These new reports prompted a reinvestigation of the Redding case to determine if these events are isolated phenomena or if they live among us. Lost tapes online, more monsters, more experts, more video. AnimalPlanet.com slash lost tapes.